after going down 2-0 to the Phoenix Suns in the 2021 NBA Finals, did Giannis Antetokounmpo have the greatest four-game stretch of NBA history? To answer this question, we first must understand the magnitude of the moment. After scraping by the Brooklyn Nets in one of the most wild game sevens in NBA history, the Bucks seem to have dodged a bullet, thanks to the Hawks surprising the one-seeded 76ers in the second round of the postseason. However, Atlanta quickly played up to the competition, handing Milwaukee a 116-113 loss in Game 1. After Trey Young exploded for 48 points. Then after two convincing victories from the Bucks and a Trey Young injury, Game 4 was one that the Bucks would surely win. However, this was not the case, as it was Milwaukee's worst nightmare. Their three-point shooting woes, which had plagued them in previous games in this postseason, had came back, as they only shot 21% from deep as a team. But that wasn't even the worst of it, as nothing could prepare them for this moment. Watch this, Ernie. And this is Ooh. the play as Giannis comes down. Hyper extends the left knee. So one way to classify severity here is just the degrees of hyperextension. This looks to be about 30, 45 degrees, which is honestly a very, very significant amount. Giannis badly hyperextended his knee while trying to defend an alley-oop dunk. And as a result, the Bucks would fall 110 to 88. Coming into game five, the Hawks elected to rest Trey Young for an extra game due to the bone bruising in his foot, which he suffered back in game three. So coming into games five and six, Milwaukee played to make them eat their words. As after two games of brilliance from both Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, Milwaukee won the series in six games. Heading into the NBA Finals, there was one question on everybody's minds. Will Giannis be able to play in the series? During which the Bucks announced that Giannis Antetokounmpo is available and will start Game 1. Even though Giannis was fit to play in Game 1, it would be Chris Paul that would steal the spotlight. Dropping 32 points and 9 assists on 63% shooting, giving the Suns a 1-0 series lead. Then in Game 2, it was Devin Booker's turn, putting up 31 points, 6 assists with 7 made triples on 48% shooting. Despite Giannis finding his groove with 42 points, 12 rebounds, 3 blocks on 68% shooting, Phoenix would extend their series lead to 2 0 with Milwaukee down 2 to nothing, heading back home, we can now try and answer the question on if Giannis had the greatest four-game stretch of NBA history. To do this, we'll first have to break down the game footage and his stats. And secondly, we'll then compare his numbers to some of the all-time greatest finals performances to get to a real conclusion. First, let's go to the 11th of July, 2021 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's game three, and with their bucks down two games to nothing, the Milwaukee crowd was restless. But lucky for them, Giannis was about to deliver an all-time great performance. To begin, he grabs the defensive rebound and makes a hit ahead pass to Drew Holiday, who's good enough to knock it down. Now with the ball in Holiday's hands, he'll drive and kick to Giannis, who will then make a great drop-off pass to Brook Lopez. Here, Drew will miss a three in transition, but it doesn't matter, as Giannis pulls down the O rebound and gets three the old-fashioned way. For it only being his first season with the team, Drew was tasked with a lot of ball-handling duties. Here, perfectly finding Giannis on the roll for the dunk. Here in the two-man game with Chris Middleton, even just his presence makes the Suns' defense crack, giving up a mid-range hit for Chris. Giannis would spend the first quarter getting his team into the game, as here he draws in the defense to find Bobby down low for two. Now out on the run, he will again find Bobby, who this time can't get it to go, but the freak sure can, grabbing the rebound for two. Here off an airball three from Brook Lopez, it's PJ Tucker, who's first of the ball and finds Giannis, who does the rest. Now again in the two-man game with Chris Middleton, Giannis receives the ball down low, and this time he calls his own number, banking it off the glass for two, plus the foul. With DeAndre Ayton on the bench, Phoenix tried out Jay Crowder on Giannis, who was clearly not going to be able to contain him in the post as Giannis gets two more. Out on the run, Giannis collides by the Phoenix Suns defense for another easy two. Once Holiday's pass gets broken up, it should be the Suns ball, but Giannis is just able to rip it away from Johnson for another throwdown. It was clear in game three that the Bucks wanted it a lot more than the Suns did, as here Giannis grabs the offensive rebound and then puts it back up and in. Now with the Suns making a comeback on a 7-0 run, Giannis will again get his teammates involved, finding Pat Connaughton down low for two. Now with Booker on him, Giannis misses the floater, but thanks to a smart tip by Bobby Portis, he can get it back for the foul M1. Milwaukee made all the hustle plays in game three and ran away with the game late, making it a series thanks to 41 points, 13 rebounds, four being offensive, along with six assists and a steal on 60% shooting from Giannis. It can't be ignored that it was also Booker's bad shooting that allowed the Bucks to dominate as much as they did, as Devin only shot three of 14 from the floor, equating to 10 points. Moving on to game four, the stage was set for the Suns to retake control control of the series, and early it felt like they were going to do just that, as the Suns built up an early 12-4 lead in the first five minutes. But then the Bucks, led by Giannis and Chris, mounted a comeback. As here in the two-man game, Chris Middleton finds Giannis, who's able to finish a round of crowd for two. Here off a Bobby Portis 
miss, Giannis comes parachuting in for the putback slam. Now out in transition, you can see the wall that the Suns are now building on defense. And by this time, Giannis knew just what to do. And that was to pass the ball, as here he finds Middleton who attacks baseline for two. The Suns defense on Giannis was much tighter in game four, which allowed Chris Middleton to get more opportunities. But even in a crowd, Giannis is still good enough to call his own number. Here with good ball movement by the Bucks, Jeff Teague hits Giannis all by himself for two. Game four was a much tighter affair, as Devin Booker had came to play. Here using a DHO of DeAndre Ayton to hit a fall away mid-range jumper. And then one-on-one -on -one with Pat Connaughton, he makes this tough shot. But now back in the two-man game, Chris Middleton will again find Giannis for another slam. Because of the tighter defense on Giannis, he was having a quieter game by his standards, ending the game with 26 points. However, in game four, Giannis did virtually everything else, here running the floor for two. And throughout the game, he would pull down 14 rebounds, dish out eight assists while picking up three steals and two blocks. One of those blocks being series defining. But before we get to that, let's pick it back up again in the third term. As the Suns and Bucks were locked into a tight back and forth duel. Here Giannis draws in the help and sprays it back out to Pat Connaughton for a triple to retake the lead. But the lead wasn't going to last long, as here Devin Booker makes another tough fall away jumper. Now with the Phoenix lead back out to nine, PC would make another triple. Then it was Giannis time, as off an inbounds pass from Jay Crowder intended for DeAndre Ayton, he's able to come up with a steal, leading to an open slam, cutting the lead back down to just three points. Then thanks to a hard screen by PJ Tucker, Giannis finds himself all alone down on the baseline for two more. Then out on the run, the Bucks ball movement and a nice look away pass from Giannis gives PC another open triple and the lead, capping off a 7-0 run. But then right back the other way, it was Devin Booker once again, making this pull-up jumper. For the rest of the game though, it was a Chris Middleton Giannis masterclass. As first K-Mid makes this tough fall away jumper and then back in the two-man game with Giannis, he makes another. Now one of the greatest plays in NBA Finals history is about to take place. Now Booker throws it up for eight. Shot blocked by Antetokounmpo. What a block from Giannis. As an alley-oop pass intended for DeAndre Ayton gets miraculously swatted away at the summit by Giannis. But the game still had to be won. As with the ball in Chris Paul's hands, clinging onto a two-point lead, Giannis made another play, forcing Chris Paul to lose the ball, leading to a Chris Middleton bucket. Chris Middleton miraculously scored 10 of his 40 points in the final two minutes of this game. And the defense from Giannis in the fourth quarter was elite, helping the Bucks to tie the series, even though Devin Booker had 42 points himself. However, when looking at the rest of Devin Booker's stat line, there's not much else to look at. As Phoenix began to slip deeper and deeper into isolation basketball, the more the series went on. Heading into a massive game five in Phoenix, the Bucks had the upper hand, not because of the venue, but because of the momentum. But early, that didn't appear to matter as the Suns built a 16 point lead in the first turn. But then here comes Giannis and the Bucks. First with this N1 over Torrey Craig, and then out on the break, PC fakes the pass to Portis and then makes a triple. His third of the game, starting off a perfect three for three. Then with Giannis back in the game, he gets back out on the break. And with the sun setting up a wall, he finds Bobby in the corner for three and the lead. Giannis started game five super unselfish, making the right passes and setting screens to get his teammates going. Here allowing Chris the space needed to hit the jumper. Then he does the same for Drew Holiday moments later. And now in the lane, he finds a cutting Middleton for two more. It was clear that the Suns just wanted to score with Devin Booker, falling into isolation heavy basketball. As Drew makes this tough three after the steal. With a lead out to 11 points, Giannis extends it with this tough move through two Suns defenders. Here, the Bucks ball movement again beats the Suns defense, finding Brook wide open for a dunk. Here, the Suns dare PJ Tucker to shoot, and when he misses, Giannis is right there to slam it back home. With the Bucks holding a commanding lead, the Suns would rally to get back into the game. As first, it was Booker getting two plus the foul, and then Bridges finds himself open for a corner hit. Here, Giannis gets switched on to CP3, who makes a tough finish over him. Now, with the Suns knocking on the door, Middleton steps up, making this tough step back jumper over the defensive Crowder, drawing the foul and one. And then after that, he made another step back, this time a triple over Bridges, getting the lead back out to six points. However, the Suns weren't done yet, as first Booker makes this wild triple, and then an attacking Chris Paul on the baseline is able to get two over PC, cutting it down to a one-point game. With the Bucks offense out of rhythm and the ball in the Suns' hands, Milwaukee was going to need a huge defensive play, and boy did they ever get that. As Tucker and Yana stopped Booker in his track, allowing Drew Holiday to steal the ball, leading to this. Knocked away and stolen by Holiday. Phoenix has to foul. And a pinnacle ball throws it down. And a foul. 
In a matter of moments, Milwaukee went from potentially losing Game 5 to taking a commanding 3-2 series lead with a Game 6 to be held on their home floor. Giannis would finish the game with 32 points, 9 rebounds and 6 assists with 3 steals and a block on 60% shooting, while Holiday and Middleton combined for an efficient 56 points, with Drew Holiday also having 13 assists. For the Suns, Devin Booker had another 40-point game, but again, if you look at the stat sheet, he only had 3 assists. Heading into Game 6, the NBA world had come to their senses about this Milwaukee Bucks team, as nobody was giving Phoenix much hope to win this Game 6 on the road. However, after enduring a tough opening term, Phoenix outscored the Bucks 31-13 to in the second quarter to lead by 5 at halftime. From here, it was arguably the greatest NBA Finals performance we've ever seen, as Giannis made shot after shot, carrying his team to stay in the game, as Middleton and Holiday's brilliance from Game 5 was seemingly left in Phoenix. Giannis was absolutely unstoppable, here getting the offensive rebound around two Suns to defenders to bank it back up and in. Then here in the mid-range, Giannis makes this incredibly tough fallaway jumper to retake the lead. What many people forget about this game is how the Bucks needed every single shot Giannis was making to even stay in this game. And it wasn't just on offense, but it was on both sides of the ball too. Here erasing this Booker layup attempt on his way to five blocks. Here Chris Middleton misses a shot he was making in his sleep only a couple games ago. But luckily for him, Giannis is right there to put it back in. When we talk about carry performances, this game from Giannis does not get mentioned enough. As on both sides of the ball, he was truly impossible. As here, he picks up another rejection on Devin Booker. With only six minutes left in the ball game, the Suns coaching staff had to make a drastic change to try and stop him. As on this possession, they sent four defenders and they all got dunked on. It got to the point where the Suns could have sent all five defenders and Giannis would have still scored. Here, making this tough layup around DeAndre Ayton. And then, of course, Giannis put the game away with some free throws, completing a 50-point masterclass. To win Milwaukee their first championship in 50 seasons, Giannis had a double-double of 50 points, 12 rebounds, with 5 blocks on 64% shooting. But now we have to answer the question that the video was set out to answer. Was this the best 4-game stretch from a single player in NBA Finals history? In my opinion, that Game 6 performance from Giannis is the single greatest player performance in NBA Finals history. But if we look back at Games 4 and 5, it was the help of Middleton and Holiday that got those teams over the line. Other all time great NBA Finals performances was Magic's 42, 15, and 7 with 3 steals on 60% shooting, closing out the Philadelphia 76ers in 6 games without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. However, over the course of the entire series, Magic only averaged 21, 11, and 8, compared to that of Giannis's 35, 13, and 5. However, in the 1962 NBA Finals, Bill Russell had a performance that would long be forgotten, as he averaged a staggering 27 points, 23 rebounds, and 6 assists assists, helping his Celtics to beat the Lakers in a seventh game, where he dropped 30 points with 40 rebounds. Then in the 1995 finals, Hakeem Olajuwon was able to carry his team, being the lone all-star to a title, as he averaged 32.8 points, 11.5 rebounds, and 5.5 assists, sweeping Orlando in four straight games. We also can't forget to mention the 2000 NBA finals, where Shaquille O'Neal averaged 38 points, 16.7 rebounds, and 2.7 blocks, or Elgin Baylor's 40.6 40.6 points, 17.9 rebounds, and 3.7 assists in the 1962 finals. However, I personally don't rank Elgin's performance as high because it came in a series loss to the Celtics. We also can't not mention a Michael Jordan performance when we talk about playoff success. As in the 1993 finals, he averaged 41 points, 8.5 rebounds, 6.3 assists, with 1.7 steals, leading Chicago to beat Phoenix in six games. But then we also can't forget the 2016 NBA finals where LeBron James led the Cavaliers to a 3-1 series comeback while averaging 36 points, 11 rebounds, 9.7 assists along with 3 blocks and 3 steals on 50% shooting. For me this Giannis performance is definitely up there with the all time great ones. For me somewhere around the 7-9 to nine range feels about right but that's just my take. Where does this all time great finals performance from Giannis Antetokounmpo stack up with the rest of NBA history? Let me know in the comments below.